Can I continue? Yeah. And before we talked about, we went further to talk about BATA system. That, that was one of the first systems that was introduced. Exchange of goods and services for services. And then with what I got here, you told us that major problems of that BATA system are double goods for exchange. Most times people bring in the same goods for exchange. And then you talk about, uh, we also have that the problem of uh, BATA system is issue of storage. Issue of storage. Mm. And, it's, and it's dated over 100,000 years ago. And awesome. then we went for that to talk about commodity money. And we say that commodity money is measurement. We talk about uh, shekel, and it's measured by weight. And it's first used by the Mesopotamia Sikra, Mesopotamia Sikra, 3000 BC, that is before Christ. Awesome. And then we went for that, we went for that to talk about gold and coins, gold and coins. And uh, this uh, Herodotus, pardon the name, the one I'm pronouncing the name, <laughs> Herodotus, <laughs> okay. and the first Lydia. And then we went about, we went further to talk about first minted coin was around 650 to 600 BC, 600 to 650 BC. That was before Christ. We also went further to talk about representative money. Representative money means deposit of gold and silver. When you deposit your gold, your silver, your precious object, a uh, receipt will be given to you for that. And any other receipt is taken to people see that it has value, which is redeemable for their deposit. When you offer your gold and silver, it is redeemable for their deposit. And then we talk about awesome. paper money. Paper money was first used in China during Song, Song Dynasty, known as Jehousey. Jehosi. And on the 13th century, paper money became known in Europe through traveler called Marco Polo and William of Rebrooks. Okay, and sir. Wait for that to talk. Mm -hmm. Can you sorry to interrupt, uh, but I need I needed you to I needed you to just slow down. <laughs> okay, you sir. are doing okay, a sir. great you are doing a great job, sir. But um just away from your notes, sir away from your notes, okay. Okay, I want sir. you to just talk to us, away from your notes. I want you to talk to us based on what you have wrapped, mm -hmm. okay. away All from right, your sir. notes. You don't have to All go right, into sir. details, but because okay. it seemed it seemed more like you are reading out of your notes, and I don't, I, I, I it's okay, it's your notes, but I need it, I need the touch of originality, a little bit of originality in what we are doing. So I want you to mm -hmm. grab a little bit and talk to us about it. And I need your touch. It seems more like you are reading from your notes, which is your touch, but I need more of your original touch, sir. Okay, let me just talk about two things. Okay, sir. Outside the note. I, I used to hear about legal tender. Until we had this class, believe you me, I never knew what legal tender was all about before the class wow. came up. And by that explanation, even in my house, I discussed it with my family about the word legal tender. Uh, tender. When a okay, legis the, legislator of the, the legislative of the country give a legal back into it, that one I know I discussed it with my family the day we had hmm. the class. It was so interesting, very, very interesting. And then oh, uh, sure. one thing, like, another thing I will talk about is that the issue of... Um, uh, what do you call the uh, uh, representative money? I also okay. know I discuss it with them. I discuss with my, my my with my family that when you present your gold and your silver, and immediately my son said, "Yes, Daddy, we have watched a film like that before. Here, people deposit their precious <laughs> item, you know, makes them to believe that they have money, they are rich, not in terms of cash. That one I will never forget. And then, uh, oh. apart from the notes, we. The issue of before Christ, that BC and AD is something I've been hearing about it. I know that BC is before Christ, but AD, I never knew until after this class. So there are a lot to talk about. But like I said before, I am excited to be in this platform. And I will do everything possible to make sure I maintain this platform as the Lord will give me strength 
I think I, awesome. I can work for now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank is you. that all you have? Is that all you have to say about money, sir? No, that's not all I have to say about money. Okay, please go ahead. Continue, sir. Thank you very I'm much. I'm actually watching thank the you. time because I, I have you on timer, but you still have time. So continue, sir. And then I also remember we talked about when uh, Nigeria Federal House of, uh, uh, what do you call it, Nigeria Federal House of Legislature legislated about Central Bank in 1952. But unfortunately, okay. they didn't succeed until we got to 1959, which is about six, seven years down the line before we had Central hmm. Bank. And uh, my son awesome. also was happy about that. You know, I discuss a lot with my family when I'm through with the class. That's and one, that's one way you learn. It's very okay. Yes. That's one way you learn. Yes. You attach experience to learning. Then it helps yes, you sir. recollect. Yes, sir. Um, and then uh, one thing I, one thing I would say last again was when, uh, when CBN finally came in and started in July 1959. Let me just wrap up with the motives of holding money. Okay. You know, we used to say when when any when you don't value whatever you are holding, the inevitable is bound to happen. So when you understand mm. the motive of holding money, money becomes more valuable. Uh, we, okay. with, with what you have with, with what you have taught us, we understand that one of the motive or reason for holding money is because it's transactional and it's also okay. speculative and then it's also okay. uh, precautionary. And then my son okay. also asked me, Daddy, what do you mean by speculative? I had to make him understand that in life, things are going on. You need to be decisive for time. If not, you cannot be able to do what you need to do. You need to be decisive. Mm. When, things, when they are speculating things, it's like a rumor. It's like things going up and down. But on your own, if you have money in your hand, you have to decide. Even before the money comes, you already decide what you want to do with it. That is another way of holding money. If not, the money will come and will just go like that because you don't have something in mind to do with the money. Thank you very much. Okay. I think I will stop from that. Yes, I will stop from Okay, that. Uh, just, just on that, sir, just in line yes, with what you just said, sir, the speculative yes, sir. motive of holding money is just yes. like we talked about in the class. Is basically because, you know, there are some times you are just going, you did not plan for something and all of a sudden, there's an opportunity that came up. You yeah. understand? There's an opportunity that came up and you quickly want to take advantage. Let me use myself as an example. You know, there was a right, time sir. I had in mind to buy a crest. That was when I was still working in the hospitality industry. I had in mind to buy a crest. So I never had it in mind that day that I was going to buy that day. But I just went out on a normal day. And fortunately for me, I came across the crest. So mm. at that moment, if I had not have money, you know, it's one thing I wanted to buy, it's one thing I needed, but I didn't plan to buy it that day. So if I had, mm. if I had no liquid with me that day, it is what I had wanted to buy, but I would, have, I would not have been able to purchase it. So one of the reasons for holding money, which is a speculative reason, is that there might be times opportunity will come along and you mm. definitely have to quickly take advantage of the opportunity. We also spoke about the the precautionary motive. Yes. What 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 is the precautionary motive about, sir? The precautionary motive is issue of saving money. It simply means, like what they usually say in our local language, prevention is better than uh, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, prevention is better than cure. So precaution motive is you having the money, saving it in case of anything, you can be able to do something with it, like investing your money. I don't okay. want that. I'm um, right. Yes. That's 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 not bad. But um, I don't want to. I just just you are still on this. Just hold on, sir. Mister Joseph, okay, sir. please yes, sir. unmute Thank yourself. You. Mister Joseph, please. I want you to elaborate. I want you to elaborate more on this um, motives of holding money, sir. Holding money. Yeah. Yes. Motives of holding money. Yes, please. Okay. Can you come in?
I'm coming. Let me, I think I, I jot a note on that. I'm coming, please. Okay. Um, it's okay. So, motives of holding money, um, first of all, we have to know the word. Can we hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clearly, sir. We have to know the word motive. When we are talking about motive of holding money, it means that uh, we have to take the discussion, just like um, Mr. Edward said, uh, money has an effect. It has advantages and disadvantages. So, in collaboration to the motives of holding money, we post money for different reasons and for different different perspectives. So this motive of this money is that we use money to do different kind of things and um, to introduce something to build and to organize. This is where also we come to know to uh, we come to know people, their their interaction, their influences, their aims and, and their and their ability towards a particular job. And if had it been that there's no motive within one another, there's no how we can come close to one another or we can be able to meet, mingle with one another. So motive of all this money is an indication of um, bringing people together to get to know each other, either in an organization or in a family. So this is just my own um, addition to that. I don't know if I am right or wrong. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please, you can uh, mute yourself. Thank you for that wonderful contribution. Hey, um, Miss Blessing, please can you unmute yourself and talk to us about the motives? What are the motives behind now? Let's even remove the word, let's remove the big word motive. Why do people owe money? Why do you go out every day with money in your pockets? Miss Blessing, can you hear me? Unmute yourself, please. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so, please, yes. can you elaborate more on it? The motive of holding money. Yes, it's permits me to get water. Please, I feel dehydrated. But, but continue, now. The motive of holding money, like, for example, we have uh, something like transaction motive. That transaction motive is like when we are making use of the money, how we spend the money. If, it's, if we are using that, to withdraw the money from the bank or so we use that of transactionary motive. Without like that, we don't know how we spend the money. We don't know if we are spending the money like carelessly or anything of such. So that transactionary motive is to calculate how we spend the money, how we make use of the money, and how the money is being spent. To so know how it's being arranged. So when you are spending money in that uh, motive, that uh, transactionary motive, when spending money that way, so with that you will not know that okay, this is how I spend my money. I spend it on something like this. I spend it on something like this. So like that being done, you will not know that okay, this is how the money, the motive in which I spend this money is like this. That is under that of a transactionary motive, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Then, then we have something like a precautionary motive, something like that. We have precautionary motive. And that precautionary motive is just like um, showing you how you can like caution yourself on how to spend the money. Like it's not you spending money carelessly or not knowing how the money is meant is being spent. So precautionary motive is how it can put it straight on how to spend money so that you now know that when you spend this one, you say that I've spent this money and this is what is left. So you know how you have spent your money and you know how you spent it. It's not as if you spent it carelessly or maybe you spent it the way it's not supposed to. So that precautionary motive show you how you can spend the money in a wise way. Okay, let me put it like that. Spending of money in, an, in a wise way in which you yourself understand that you do not spend it carelessly or you do not misspend it. So that is what I understood 
by that of a uh, precautionary spending, teaching you how Thank to you very the much. Yeah. Thank you very much. You have you have spoken well. Thank you very much, ma. Uh, Miss Chinaye, are you with us, Miss Chinaye? Can you unmute yourself? Okay, Miss Chinaye, she she's not responsive. Miss Faith, are you there? Hello, sir. I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. Miss Chinaya, please, can you elaborate a little bit more on the motives of holding money? Okay, I um, I think um, I wasn't in the class, but um, with what I I have to go through the previous um, classes that were sent to me. We also talk about uh, uh, the motive, as in for uh, money, holding money with. The reason of consistency. If you, you know, we find out that most of the time we spend, most of the money we use for things, most of the time we keep for consistency because of one thing or the other. It's not as if we actually pray for such, you know, for it's not being planned. But we find out that at the end of the day, we we, we spend most of the money for consistency. And most of okay, the money... Ma, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. The word contingency. Can you please help us break it down for people like us? I don't understand big, big grammar. Can you please help That's... us break it down a little bit? <laughs> okay. What you don't plan, what what you you don't plan to buy, what you don't plan okay. to buy. Does it mean does it mean unforeseen circumstances? Definitely, sir. Thank you very much. So we, one of the reasons why we owe money is because of the unforeseen situations. Things yes, we don't yes. expect that happens. Yes. That is what Ms. Chinere is calling contingency. Thank you for breaking it down for us, Emmanuel. Now, Mr. Emmanuel, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Also, Mr. Emmanuel, we, we were actually calling you to please introduce yourself the other time, you know, so you can know where you're watching us from and your department. So you can do that now and also help us elaborate on what you understand by the motives of holding money. <laughs> okay, my name is uh, Emmanuel. I'm a 100 level student, second semester in uh, criminology. Okay, in Abuja. thank you. Awesome. Mm. So what do you understand by the motive, sir? Why do we owe money? Why do we go around with money in our pockets? Uh, maybe because of uh, emergency. Okay. I think that one still falls under the unforeseen contingency, just like Ms. Chine said. Thank you. What else? For what purpose we owe money again, sir? Um, I, do, I did not study my, my book, though. Okay. Okay, that's okay. I think you've even given us one already. Thank you very much. That's Thank fine. You. Yeah, so you can unmute uh, you can mute yourself. Miss um Miss Mary. Miss Mary, can you unmute yourself, please? Miss Mary, can you unmute yourself? Okay, sir. Please, can you elaborate more on? We know we have about three motives of owing money, and Mr. Um, Edward has helped us to speak about these motives. But I want to hear people's view. Since money is what affects all of us, whether black or white, whether uh, Igbo or Yoruba, money is one thing that affects everybody. So, why do we owe money? Why do we go about with money in our pockets? Please, can you expand more on the motive of owing money? Um, to me, I think for emergency sometimes and unexpected things. Hmm. That's the unforeseen contingency, okay? It's okay. Uh, Miss Regina is here now. Miss Regina, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, please, yes. ma, can you, can you help us elaborate on the motives of holding money, ma? 
for investment okay for emergency purpose and to meet immediate or needs okay so now mr uh, edward said we have three motives according to him oh, according to him you know he's our tutor today he said we have three motives he said the first one is transactionary the second one is for um, unforeseen contingencies let me use mr mm -hmm. uh, blessings uh, grammar shared contingency i hope you understand the meaning of contingency ma Im uh, emergency good very good. important so she, uh -huh. so she said unforeseen contingency for transactionary purpose and speculative so now you have also said three things so now which one now is under investments which one is under by buying things can you help us be so we can understand better okay the for immediate needs can go for consumption the one for investment is the one we put in the bank okay it is according to the material can you help us give examples of each motives examples of transactionary motive or holding money example of speculative an example of unforeseen contingencies can you give us examples of these three the unforeseen yes ma'am okay now she has muted herself miss regina has muted herself that's okay uh let's not spend all day okay she has unmuted you want to say something ma okay um hello, i think hello. i should yeah i can hear you hello? ma. you have the floor you have the floor ma oh uh, the transaction motive is the one yes, for the day to day running awesome awesome you are just eating the nail on the head So thank you very much, Ma. You can mute yourself. Ma, you have tried. Thank you. We need to move. We need to move forward. It is Mr. Edward now that has spoken. We still have others here to speak. So as we can see, you know, um, I understand that. I understand. You know, I spoke with a lot of students in the classroom today. I called them one on one, the one who chatted. We we spoke. I understand that we all are busy with work, trying to manage, strike a balance between work and studying. For the women, family, their children, and studying. You understand? I understand very well. And that's why I have taken it upon myself to make learning seamless as much as possible. Believe me, you, I barely have time for myself because I want to give my best at what I'm doing. Now, it is just obvious that as much as we are trying to learn, we have a lot of things contending with these informations in our head. And if there are too much information in this our head, if we do not sieve out the unnecessary information, if we not block, close the door to some unnecessary information, it will always... What I'm trying to say is that as much as we are trying to attend classes on YouTube, we are trying to write our notes. We have to imbibe. We we have to go away from this level of uh, writing my notes is enough. We have to go further to make this thing part of us. Now, this is why we have these classes because I want to make it very interactive. What we have learned, you know, basically the kind of teaching we do on YouTube these days are just points, basic points and key points. Now, this is where we die, die it. This is where we relate it to reality. Now, when I talk about the motives of holding money, I don't even expect us to spend two minutes on this because there are a lot of things we might still definitely have to talk about. Now, motive of holding money, he said three motives. Transaction, from the word transaction, what is the meaning of transaction? Buying and selling. Is that not transaction? I buy, you sell. That's transaction. You hold money because you want to transact. And what are the transactions we do every day? You have a car. You need to go to the filling station to refill your 
your tank. You have made a transaction. You are going to work. Why is this my AP is falling down? You are going to work. You need to spend transports. That's one of the transactionary motives. You hold money. You get to work. You need to use mama mama put. And one of the transactionary motives you are holding money. Anything that involves you giving money out in exchange of product or service is transactionary motive. Now, for speculative, from the word speculative, when things are speculating, you never can tell what is what. So you owe money in your pocket because of opportunities that you don't expect. That is what the speculative is all about. You owe money in your pocket. You can just like I gave an example of when I wanted to buy a crest. I never had it in mind. Especially our mommies, they they do this a lot. They they definitely need something in the house. But that day they don't plan to buy. But fortunately, they went out and they saw it. Normally on a normal day, that thing is sold for one thousand naira. But that day they saw it for five hundred naira or even three hundred naira, and they quickly purchase. That kind of motive now is what we call speculative. You quickly take advantage of something like that. And we said the unforeseen contingency. From the word unforeseen, you know, in first semester on the level, I said it that many of our questions, self, many of the questions in the exam, they set logical questions. Some of the questions are not even the material. They just want to test your intellect. They want to test how logically you can reason. You understand? So there are some questions that you even come, come about. You just need to think logically. You just need to add one plus one. When we talk about uh, when we talk about the unforeseen contingency, just from the word unforeseen, since you do not expect, maybe God forbid you got to work now. You are having headache. You don't, you don't expect to have work headache at work that day. You quickly use money and get yourself drugs. So these are just the basic thing. And we believe, I believe we are clear on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Edward. So let's, um, he has a lot of things. He has spoken about money a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Edward. So let's ask somebody else. You can mute yourself, sir. And let's ask somebody else talk. Okay, let me see who do we have here. Okay, um, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Jewelers, please. You can also say something about you can talk to us about something, sir. Okay, so um, you know, like I said before, I've not been in the class for a while, and uh, you know, we talked about it because of the the schedule of the program of the classroom. Before we had these classes in the evening, and it passes to my uh, program of working and all that. And when it changed, it was a big stress for me to join the class because when I when the class was going on, I was working. So, but I, I had to squeeze myself to fight to make a note to you know so that I can uh, contribute to the class for today. So I can't tell you much, but what I want to uh, sorry, sir, uh, sorry for interrupting, sir, Mr. Jelas, yeah. please can you show us your face? Whoever is talking that is teaching us, please show us your face. How do you want to see my face? Are you seeing my face right now? Uh -huh, yes, yes. So we can, we can, you know, when you are talking to us, we can see your face there, we can understand better. Yes, until now, it's only me, Edward, was showing our face. Eh? But it's okay. So what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about economies, uh, economies itself. And okay. uh, what I want to talk about that is, I just want to give us a little history about macro economies so macro okay. economies like we all know that macro economy is talking about the economy as a whole not micro why micro economy is talking about the smaller uh, part of economy which is a uh, individual economy so what i want to talk about that economy is that the word micro economy was first used uh, uh, by uh, Regina Fisher in 1933. She was the first person that used this word, microeconomy. And the microeconomy is used by the, um, what do they call the metropol, but my, what is in the tutor? Tell me. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's difficult for me to. Atantilis. 
<laughs> mercantilist, right? Yes, it was a methodological approach to economist problem, you know. So they were using it to, you know, try to see how they can solve the economic problem. So after it, the microeconomy uh, was um, microeconomies is uh, is uh, is the study of uh, of uh, microeconomy is the study of human is the study of human uh, human behavior in terms of uh, in terms of uh, management. Yes, a microeconomy is concerned about economical system as whole, which I said before. And then microeconomy was adopted by the phys, uh, phys, 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 physical, physical. And the physical, uh, physical means the, uh, the economic, the economic, uh, physical means the economic, econo, econo, economic, 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 that okay, Mr. Uh, Jonas, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Just wait, take wait, it easy. I know sir. what I'm trying to do. Sir. Just get me choked up somehow. It's a discussion. Okay. Uh, it's a discussion forum, so we have to talk. We have to deal with it the way it's coming out. So okay. I'm just trying to. I'm not trying to read it from the the something. I'm just trying to explain what I have. Uh, okay. Awesome. You know. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what I what I've learned, I'm just trying to. So this is why he's just taking it like this. Trying to remember those things. Trying to recall what I have read. And this note I'm reading is a note that I, con I con yesterday it was yesterday evening that I tried to you know put up this uh, together. This note. Okay. Yeah, if you see it so on the I platform. don't, I don't. What I'm trying to say now is that I don't really need you to give me word for word. No, that's not what I'm trying to do here. You understand? I don't need you to read, yeah. uh, read your notes for me. I just need you to give me a general understanding. That's what we need: a general understanding general. of what you understand by micro what you have chosen you want to talk to us about micro and mi micro and my uh, micro economy so just give us a general okay, understanding okay okay of what okay, it is. okay so so and now let me talk about what i understand about 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 micro economy so i'm talking about micro economy micro economy i understand that micro economy is the economy that deals the, the economies that deal with the the like the aggregate the aggregate itself and uh, it deals with the so it's microeconomy, microeconomy deals with the management of the state resources, uh, the, the, the country resources, and it's um, uh, microeconomics is manages the, it reduces, in a country where it functions, it reduces the uh, unemployment level of the, 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 the states and the government, and it helps to uh, it it also helps to empower the micro economics itself the micro uh, uh, the, yeah the micro economy the little economy the which is the individual the micro economy which is the individual um, um, individual and the market economy as the smaller the smaller micro yes the smaller micro economy which is the smaller uh, uh, form of uh, economy, like we all understand that uh, macro economy is the bigger economy that manages the world wet, and the micro is the one that manage the like normal people like us, like the entrepreneurs and and uh, and uh, you know one man businesses that are using. So okay, okay. And, thank and, you very and, much, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry yes. to stop you in your tracks. Thank you very much, sir. So okay. now, according to what you have said, sir. From the yeah. world now, both micro and macro economy study yes. the behavioral economic situation, studies the economic situation of a country. Okay, we all have agreed that both micro and macro, they are both about the economy of the country, not of yeah. the world not of the world but for a particular country now in this country to divide it properly because you cannot have more than what you can chew in your mouth to divide it properly so they now say okay let's first of all talk about individuals before we now talk about the economy at large are we together 
yes, yes. For us to for us to interpret a, a equation, we have to first treat its elements. Now, in the equation, now the equation itself is the micro economy. That is the economic of a country at large. But the elements that makes up that equation is what is referred to as a micro. Now, individuals, you and me, combination of you and me makes up the economic activity of Mr. Jewelers, Mr. Mr. Emmanuel, Ms. Regina, Mr. Edward, the economic activity of each and every one of us makes up the aggregates. And when we say aggregate, we're talking about the total, the aggregate economic action of the country. Now, so according to what Mr. Jolas is telling us now, Mr. Jolas now said that micro deals with the individual and macro deals with the aggregates economic activity of a country. So thank you very much, Mr. Jolas. So you can go ahead now. One of the goals of economic, uh, one of the goals of the macro, uh, macro economies is to stabilize the, um, the stabilize this to stabilize the economy of the state. Like you likely said, uh, it helps to stabilize the economy of the state. And the micro economy, the objective uh, is uh, um, of the recent years is. Uh, for growth in the in the it helps to uh, grow the economy it helps mm -hmm. the economy to to grow and then um, um what again i think i've uh, exhausted the whole thing i i i, I took thank down you. yesterday <laughs> so thank you very much so, but thank you very much i understand yes. as far as time goes on i can be uh, um, and, uh, thank you very much thank you very much i i can understand and i really appreciate each and every one of us you have spoken even more than enough that we had wanted thank you very much so um miss regina was talking the other time before the network issue happened so uh miss rena although you told me you'll be at work you might be able to contribute if you will be able to contribute now just unmute yourself and say something and miss mary miss mary you can um Okay, Ms. Rena can talk now. Ms. Rena. Yes, sir. Please, you, can you please introduce yourself and also talk to us about what you have learned during the course of the, during the course of the okay. one, two, three. Okay, sir. My name is Rena Precious. Can we see your face, please? We, we need to see our face. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> it's dark here, kind of. Hey, you, you can get touch light or something. So far, you are talking. <laughs> you have to see your face. Okay, sure. okay my name okay. is Anna Precious, hundred level awesome. economy student, second semester. Okay. Awesome. So I'll awesome. be talking about um. D N P and GDP, that is gross national product and gross domestic product. Okay, GDP. Okay, you have the floor, ma'am. Okay, first of all, I'll be taking GDP. GDP, which is um the acronym for gross domestic product, has to do with, just like the name domestic, it has to do with the calculations of goods and services that are produced in, um, in a particular country within a given period of time and it has nothing it has nothing to do with goods and services that are produced outside the country or older years okay okay so it does not include income and properties that are abroad and also the key point um, of the definition is content time and where that is um content has to do with the goods they are calculating for time is the particular time that goods is produced the year 
and also where is in a country in a given country or state so things are not included in the gdp number one we have it has nothing to do with goods that are produced outside the country number two it does not calculate for um goods that are produced in older years and also transfer payments it has nothing to do with illegal activities like activities in the black market so we have the GNP, which is also the acronym for Gross National Products. And um, this one is just like the opposite of Gross Domestic product because it has to do with goods and the calculation of goods and services that are produced both in the country and outside the country. And also, um, it takes account of three components It takes account of three yeah, components. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> it takes account of three components, which is income or output, which is um, income or output of the resident or citizen in the country, income or output of citizens residing in other countries, and also exclude income or output of foreigners residing in the domestic country. So it deals with income and output of citizens in the country, income and output of citizens outside the country, and also exclude income and output of foreigners residing in a particular country. It's okay. That's we are, no, we know you are a student of economics, so you have just come <laughs> and displayed your talent now. Thank you very much. You have you have done justice. Thank you very much, Miss Vena. So she has said Welcome, she has said a thing about a thing or two about that. And we have other things like disposable income. You know, we have disposable income. And um, do we have anybody who can help us talk about what disposable income is before we close the chapter of GDP and GNP? So the disposable income has to do with the income that is available. Income that is available after you are removed your savings and you have removed your tax when your savings has been removed and when tax has been removed the remaining income left so called disposable income meaning that it's income that you can spend income that you have right to spend so we have that as that i was hoping somebody was going to talk to us about tax you know what tax is uh, the types of tax we have but nevertheless we all have done great tonight. We all have contributed well for you to even be on this class tonight. For you to listen, you know, you all have done well. And I believe if you continue like this, we will definitely learn a lot this semester. So um, just to conclude the class tonight, um, the keynote of the course ECHO 201 will be made available on Monday. It will be on the website. Ms. Agu, can you unmute yourself, please? If you can hear me, unmute yourself. And please, let's hear from you. Okay, while we wait for your response. Now, we all have done well now. On Monday, the keynote will be made available. And today, I'm also posting the timetable for next week. I'm posting the timetable for next week. And we are done with MKT 108. Also, the keynote will be made available. and maybe in between the week, we also pick a day for, I think MKT is for only for students of business administration, where we can also discuss MKT. So thank you very much, everyone. We all have done well. Let's keep up the good work. God bless our efforts. Crown it with um, success in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. And please, let's take enough rest and let's prepare for tomorrow. It's a fresh week tomorrow. God bless us all and good night.